A new day, a new project. Look what I got here straight from Germany. And there we go. So this is a power supply. It's supposed to deliver 12 volts, 50 amps with a total of 180 watts. This is S180-12. We have a quality seal over here. I can get rid of that already because I want to dismantle it anyway. So what else? This is supposed to run with 110 or 220. Main connection, AC. And we have the ground over here. That's the case probably. And minus and plus the voltage. We have two terminals of each because of the high amps uh, deliver 50 amps. It's pretty much. And let's open it up. So we have a screw over here. I think this one should be enough. The case it's out based on this IC 7500BD. Let's see what kind of uh, circuit is that one. We have a fuse over here over, and this one, the little um, potentiometer. You can adjust the voltage, I suppose. Okay, this is really dangerous. Don't touch that because it's the AC 110 to 120. Don't touch that. This is the output diode. Look here. Yeah. And these two are MOSFET. These are two MOSFET transistors. The output uh, capacitors, and I think they are around 1000 micro each of them. So we have like 4000 microfarads over there. Let's put this back. Hopefully this band over here, it's not dangerous. Let's check the ground connection to the chassis. Perfect, we have ground over there. Now it's time to plug it in and to see about the voltages. Okay, before having the main connected, I have to say that there is a piece of plastic in between the contacts and the bottom plate here. To be sure that everything is okay over there, I put an extra one with a double tape. So now even if you push it, you can't have a shock hazard over here. At least for the mains it's very dangerous because we are working with live mains over here, 230 volts and it's a disaster. Let's have a piece of wire, this one connected to the main entrance like this. Okay. And now we can securely plug into the mains. And there we go. We have power. Let's see if, if we can adjust the power over here. So now we have 14.3. If, if we go down, turn anti-clockwise, we can go down to 10.49 or 10.5 volts and up higher than 15 volts, 15.25 volts, perfect. If I'm connecting this to a bank of batteries, lead acid batteries, and I'm having like this, you know, 14.4, then I can measure the full power of this going to the batteries. It's supposed to be 15 amps, and we're gonna do that, of course, and I'll check the current, and we'll see the temperature, and uh, how it's behaving under heavy load or in fact maximum load okay so let's have the connections here the output from this power supply will go to my voltage and watt meter and then we'll go down to the battery pack so there these batteries are pretty discharged so they will take easily 15 amps and of course we're gonna have the camera running to check the amps and the voltages in the same time and the temperature with an infrared thermometer. The battery is connected and we have 11.7 volts in the batteries. Let's have the minimum voltage here and let's plug in the power supply. Okay, so the power supply is 
on and now let's start adjusting the voltage that's 11.95 and growing we have 5 amps look there 11 amps and we reached 15 I don't want to go higher than 15 let's give a try okay 17 no but I don't want to do any crazy stuff 15 it will be okay just let it run for now Now we have more than one hour with uh, around 15 amps. We already have 16.87 amp power. Went to the batteries. Well, the temperature, it's a little bit hot. Not exactly dangerous, but you, you can still have the hand over here. So we have like 54 degrees, 55. Now, I wanna do an experiment. I'll keep the same current and I'll just put this little fan on top. Well, this is just, just a very simple fan. It's not powerful at all. And let it run for 10 minutes or so. You see the electronics worst enemy is heat. So, better be aware of that. Okay, here we have the fan. Please stay there. Let's run it for another 10 minutes or so. So we had around 55 degrees. Let me check again. 52. So this fan is really nice. You don't even hear it. It's very quiet. After my opinion, to be sure that this kind of power supply is doing the job, it needs a little bit of active cooling. It's amazing how much difference this little fan can do. We have this running for half hour or something. And look here. Let's check the temperature. My main camera just turned off. Now let's have the final results. That little fan I've been using for cooling the power supply made a huge difference. If you remember, it was around 72 degrees. And now we have 46. If I let this run for one minute, we'll go down to 40. It was 40 a few minutes, a few seconds before. And uh, we already put inside the batteries 28.61 amps hour. It's a lot of energy over there. So I can say the power supply, it's working as yes, it should. It was running two hours, almost two hours with 15 amps. But I have to say, it needs a better cooling. That's from the beginning. So don't even think about using it for high amps like I did. You know, now it's connected straight to the batteries so it's how can i say even even the wires are warm so it's a huge energy transfer if you want to use something like this you have to understand it and to have a proper cooling the power supply it's worth the money it's very cheap i, I can't remember it was like 16 17 euros or something so it's really worthing the money there's no doubt about but it needs better cooling that's it let's have again a better looking to this watt meter all i have to say that it's worthing the money okay so that's the end of the test and thank you for now i hope this was useful 
I'll be back with some other projects. Please like and subscribe. If you have any question, don't hesitate to ask and uh, be safe. Also, don't forget to have fun. Bye bye. Thank you.